Hello, this is Math with Mr. D, and today we are in Grade 5, Module 2. We're going to be talking about Lesson 3 today. Our objective for today's lesson is to represent fractions as division by using models. One of the key questions we have is, are tape diagrams useful for modeling division and how? Starting off with our first question today, as I read this question, try to visualize what is happening. Page 23, we have number one. Miss Song pours five liters of water equally into four containers. How many liters of water are in one container? As I read each part of this question, think about what we can draw. Miss Song pours five liters of water equally into four containers. Here, I know that we have five liters of water which means that I have a dividend of five. On the left-hand side, I'm going to show a model. On the right-hand side, I'm going to show a tape diagram. So I know that I have five liters. Five liters on the left and five liters labeled on the right. We're sharing that or pouring that equally into four containers. One, two, three, and four. We have four containers there. Now, if I'm going to solve this, I would need to write my division sentence out, which I have five divided by four. That's going to give me five fourths in each. I'm showing this in the model on the left. Each container gets a full liter of water. And then our last one, we're going to divide into four parts, which means that each container of water would get one and one fourth. Remember from our previous lesson that five fourths is equal to one and one fourth. Either way that I write it, it would still be a correct amount of water in each container. Continuing our learning on this problem, let's think about what quantity is the total. The quantity that we have starting off is 5 liters, and that is shown in the tape diagram as well as my model. Which quantity represents the number of equal groups? Well, that would be the four groups seen here in the tape diagram and the four red groups shown in the model, as well as my divisor. Moving on to question two. Mr. Perez pours three liters of water equally into four containers. How many liters of water are in one container? Use the tape diagram to write and solve an equation. Estimate between which two whole numbers the quotient falls. Our first task is to draw a tape diagram. Thinking about the whole amount, I know that I have three liters of water. Three liters of water. Now equally split into four containers again which means my division sentence is my dividend divided by my divisor, which is four groups, which means I would get three-fourths. Now, that second part, I kind of jumped the gun. I didn't estimate which between which two whole numbers the quotient falls, but I know that if I don't have as many liters as containers, then I would be less than one. Showing that another way, if I would have four liters of water divided by the four containers, that would give me one exactly. So since I have less than four liters shown here, if I have three, that means my quotient would be smaller than one. Okay, smaller than one, less than one. 
Moving on to number three, Mr. Evans pours 11 liters of water equally into four containers. How many liters of water are in one container? In this problem, we still have four containers, but this time we have 11 liters of water, which is more than in the last two problems. 11 liters. Also split into four different containers. Drawing my division sentence, I would have 11 divided by four. If I'm going to head, going ahead and going to divide this, I'm gonna show this now in the vertical form. We have 11 divided by four. This would be in between two and three because I know that if I give each container two liters, I gave away eight liters, I'm left with three liters, which means three liters divided into four groups would be three fourths. That amount is in between two and three holes. This question is getting me to think about my answer. How many liters of water are in one container? When I did my division in my vertical form, I found that each container had two and three fourths liters in them. How do you know that the quotient is reasonable? Well, I know that it's reasonable if I would do two liters times four containers, that would give me at least eight. So I know it has to be a little bit more than that. If I did three liters in every container, three times four would give me more than what I started with. Three times four is 12. Remember, we only started with 11 liters. 11 divided by four has to be less than three. When looking at the quotients of the last three division problems we just solved, what do you notice? Many of you might notice the denominator, which if you've been paying attention to my other lessons, when I'm dividing by four, my denominator is going to be the same as that divisor, which means I'm in four parts. Each of my holes is divided into four parts. The amount of parts I start with is going to impact my whole quotient. If we notice on this second one, I only started with three liters of water. That means that each container didn't even have a full liter of water. On the first two, 5 divided by 4 and 11 divided by 4. I do have more than a whole liter because I have enough to give each container 1 liter or 2 liters and then, then some. Here are two questions I want us to think about for the ending of this lesson. If the number of parts stays the same but the amount of water is doubled, what happens to the quotient? We can think about this as and looking at the 11 divided by four. If our divisor stays the same, but the amount of water is doubled, what happens to the quotient? So if I increase this 11 to be any other number, that quotient is also going to go up. So if I double that amount of water to be 22, my quotient would also double in its amount. That second question, if the number of parts stays the same, but the amount of water is halved, which means cut in half, what happens to the quotient? Thinking about this with a different example, four divided by four, if I had four liters of water, that would mean that each container would only have one liter. If I have that four and say, oh, I know I only have two liters now, divided by four, that would give me two fourths or a half in each container. When you have that full dividend, but don't change your divisor, you're gonna get a smaller quotient. 
if you double that dividend and stay with the same amounts that you're dividing by your divisor, you're going to double your quotient there. This has been Math with Mr. D. Thank you guys for joining me today.